Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll show you what the FGAF tool can do with automation of PI to CPI migrations. So let me first show the ICO that we're looking at here. Here we have an ICO that is sending to two receivers. And on one of these receivers, we're sending to a lot of different mappings to test some of the different capabilities of the tool to explain these things. What I'll then do is I'll go back to the FGAF tool. Here we would select the ICO. We have in Christian, I would select which CPI system it needs to go to, where which package. What's the name of this iFlow? We can check how, what the tool can do if it can figure out what to do with this. And what we can see now is it comes with some, some errors, so it has tried to do the the migration and it sees there's there some some items that needs to be uh, looked up manually but that is something that the users should do we can also see out here that for each of the communication channels we have different ways of defining what these communication channels should be like uh, when we are processing this uh, which target communication channel should be used so once we have selected that we can click on the preview and the preview would then give us a way to look at what the, the iFlow look at, process it, etc. So this gives us a, an idea about how well the tool is working, what's it, what it would look like. Good. Now I can press migrate and we have created called migrate2. So now I can press migrate and this will take all the artifacts we have in this one and create a new CPI object based on this. So let's go back to our CPI system. We can open this. We have a new artifact down here. We can see where it's migrated from as a part of our properties. And we can see it has now generated this full uh, flow of all the different artifacts that's a part of this. Um, so if we start at the top, we can see here we have a router and in this router, we have some some conditions and this is to allow us to split messages and only send it to the messages where we actually got a condition in. If we look at this mapping, there's a lot of different things we can take a look at on these different mappings. This mapping did have, if I recall it correctly, user-defined functions embedded. So here we have a user-defined function or a function library and this is then created into a separate Groovy script. And this Groovy script is then shared with all the artifacts that is actually using. So if you're making modifications to one of these, it will be reflected in the other ones. If we look at some of the other ones, we can see that there is, here we have a multi-mapping and everything that we need to handle is in this multi-mapping is then included here. So we got a line, we got a line split. And if we look at the, the resource here, so here it will just add our prefix and it will do a splitting so we can actually split the message as supposed to. If we look at, for instance, this one, this is a user defined or using our C lookup, which is also a bit challenging in normal cases. Here, what we can see we have created is it has found that we have a RC lookup in our uh, function. And what it does is then it creates some mock Groovy scripts that you have. And what you can actually do is you can insert some template Groovy scripts into this to actually let it process the same thing. And this works if you're on Cloud Foundry, if you are new, you would need to go through these things and figure out how to handle them manually. I hope this gives you a good idea about how the migration uh, works with the tool. We also have a lot of testing capability to test that the iFlow works the same way. And once you're done with uh, the iFlow development, you can also use the tool to move it into production. I hope you want to check out more. You can go to figaf.com uh, to check out more on the migration tool. Thank you.